time, deep in the vastness of space, there was a little explorer named Fitz. Well, that's what I call them. But you can name your character whatever you like when you start the game. Fitz's journey began when they landed their trusty spaceship on a mysterious planet, scattered with coal, iron, copper, stone, and what Fizz affectionately called lollipop trees. This was the seed they had chosen to land on, but the world's size, terrain scale and water level could also be customised at the start. Upon landing, Fizz was granted with their first tutorial task, mining stone with their laser beam. So off Fizz went, exploring the island and mining nodes until they had collected the required 10 stone. With the stones in hand, the game prompted Fizz to build a furnace. By pressing B to open the building menu, Fizz discovered tabs for production, logistics, power, and miscellaneous buildings and tools. Fizz began with the furnace, crafter and researcher, which were pretty self-explanatory, and the collector, which sent out little cute bee drones to harvest resources. These drones were incredibly useful, and Fizz knew they would need plenty of them. In the logistics tab, Fizz found conveyor belts, movers, and chests tools to transport items from points A to B. The power tab offered basic power generation options like the treadmill. It did take Fizz some time to figure out how to use it. But after asking a helpful developer on the Steam discussion board, they learned to run by pressing the A or D keys. Fizz also discovered the battery, which stored power to save them from constant running, and the burner, which generated 20 power using fuel like the wood and stone. The Tesla coil was then used to link power to various buildings like the collector. Finally, in the miscellaneous tab, Fizz found a very important looking contraption called the Star Launcher, which launched Fizz into the stars to visit the space hub. There, Fizz could buy weapons from an odd looking walrus. At least, Fizz thought it was a walrus, materials from a snail, or food items from a vending machine. Fizz unfortunately didn't see anywhere to sell items yet, and that made Fizz sad. Fizz was also excited to discover that they could also travel to planets with procedural dungeons. There was only one dungeon at this time, but since the game was in early access, who knew what the future held? The miscellaneous tab also included the tool bench, where you constructed the weapons, and also a training dummy, where you could test your weapon's damage. The building menus were straightforward, and Fizz quickly built the required furnace. Actually, two furnaces because there would always be a need for more than one and with the tutorial complete this was left to figure out what to do next if you're enjoying this video please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as this really helped my channel thank you anyway let's leave fizz to their adventures and talk about starground gameplay Starground is, is a top-down automation dungeon crawler developed by Big Boy Games and published by Two Left Thumbs. Currently, it is in early access. For full transparency, I was given a copy of this game, but I have not been guided on what to say and all my thoughts are my own. You can play solo, as Little Fizz did, grinding your way through harvested materials to keep your factory going, or you can play with friends, which is how Starground was designed to be enjoyed and makes the grind, well, less grindy. The gameplay is straightforward. You alternate between gathering and refining resources on your home planet and developing and maximizing the island's resources through automation. You start small with nothing but your laser beam and basic manual smelting, but progress to researching unique machines and solutions for all your logistical needs. But you are not just limited to your home planet, oh no. You can explore space and fight in procedural action roguelike inspired dungeons. What you decide to do is entirely up to you. There is no right or wrong way to play this game. It starts off quite generic. You melt your ores in your furnaces, which allows you to build new constructions. Occasionally tips pop up like you have found some food. This food helps your health, so do keep them. Like most factory games, the beginning can be a grind as you gather resources needed to build up your factory. After the furnaces, the crafter is the next best choice, along with some power to run it. In the crafter, you'll find recipes for basic parts for some constructions. The collector, which you'll need a few of, requires gears, so I would suggest working on these first, and definitely have a couple of batteries on hand. At present, there is only one planet with a procedural dungeon, though more may be implemented as the game develops. 
by battling enemies, avoiding obstacles and defeating bosses, you gain much needed currency to spend at the space hub, as well as resources to take back to your base or rare loot to help craft stronger modular weapons at the tool bench. Visuals and music. The whimsical, charming visuals enhances Starground. The colors are vibrant and the characters are cute, reminding me somewhat of Forager and Factorio. There is a great variety of animations from combat manoeuvres to the smoke from the forges, letting you know they are still active. The music blends well with the game, adding a sci-fi vibe to the ambience. There is a day and night cycle, but it doesn't seem to affect gameplay at the moment. Story and characters Presently, the story plot appears lacking. Fizz crash lands on the planet, and that's all we know so far. Whether the story progresses remains to be seen as Starground develops. There are no real survival elements present, however this does add a cosy relaxing ambience to the game. The few characters I have come across are unique, but there's no major dialogue at this time. However, if this isn't your thing, you can always head to the dungeon to fight enemies and bosses to get your adrenaline up and to see what death is like. A bit like Fizz did. Twice. One of Starground's strengths is giving you the choice to either relax on your home planet, enjoy the automation, or go out fighting in the dungeon. It feels like two games blended into one, and it does this very well. I also like the modular weapons that you build at the tool station. Each different part has their own stats, so your imagination is the limit, and you can make quirky weapons to more powerful ones. However, I did encounter a few quality of life issues that could be improved. For example, when placing food items onto your hotbar, they still stay in your inventory, taking up the space. And also, it would have been nice to have a shortcut to move all items from storage into inventory by one click. But these are minor issues. And for an early access game, I didn't come across any groundbreaking bugs or graphical issues. Unless you count the nose that kept disappearing a graphical issue. I wasn't quite sure if this was supposed to happen, as it popped up in front of Fizz twice as quickly. Starground is very basic and it feels a little empty at times, but it is a solid and fun game. It is lacking in content, but this is expected in early access, so it's time for more content to be added and the game to cook. The price is very reasonable, under £10. Overall, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 for its fun and endearing gameplay, but it is held back by the lack of content at this time. If you like factory and automation building games mixed with some dungeons crawling, with fun, simplistic gameplay and visuals, the Starground is definitely worth your time. If you're on the other hand, like pulling pints and throwing out the locals, then please check out my latest review on Tavern Manage Simulator. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more game reviews. And let me know in the comments what you think about Starground, or if there's something else you'd like me to review next. Thank you for watching and take care.